Good afternoon, everyone. It's been a while since I've done a video, but I've got something short, hopefully, that I've got on the bench here. This is one of my daily driver electric screwdrivers I like to use for taking out screws on uh, pretty much everything that I work on on the bench. And I'm starting to notice that no matter how much I charge this, it's, it's kind of weak compared to what it used to be. So I'm thinking that uh, either it's not getting charged correctly, like maybe the input diode is, uh, is gone short or open loop and, and like it's not allowing per, uh, electricity to pass through it at all, or the cell that's in here, the 1865 that's in here is dying. So let me just do a quick test. Maybe I can show it to you if I just stall this out. Hey, it sounds like it's really, really struggling there to uh, just uh, on my fingers. So let's crack this open and see if maybe it's the cell or if it's the input diode. And like I said, I'm really hoping this is just a nice quick video where it's something simple, like if it's a diode, uh, I've got plenty of surface mount diodes because uh, I just keep them on stock and I can quickly get that swapped over. Or if it's 1865, then it's, I've got plenty of 1865s and on my shelf that I use for uh, other kinds of things. So it's just five screws here. And I had to go manual, unfortunately, <laughs> back to the olden days. Um, so that's it, pretty simple. Uh, you've got a motor to drive right here, board for, it looks like just for the buttons and maybe some kind of boost conversion. Not 100% sure. Uh, here's the 1865 and uh, interesting there are there is uh, some rust or something some crap on there you can see that on both sides too but here's this input diode right here you can see it and normally when it goes bad, you might see like a burn mark on it or a crack or a melt spot. And it looks perfectly fine. So I think, I think the diode is okay. So it must be getting charged. I think it's probably just this cell. Um, let's just take this off. I already got my soldering iron heated up because I'm working on something before I started this. Let's take this off. Heat that up. Remove that wire. And this one over here. There we go. Uh, I'm going to throw this on my charger and see what it tests out to. It says 1300 milliamp hours. Hopefully you can see that 1300. I think on here originally says, yeah, uh, 1100 milliamp hours is what it was supposed to come with. So uh, it's nice it was a little bit more, but it, I'm gonna guess this is, probably has a bad short in it or it's just dying. So let me throw this on the char charger and then uh, we'll come right back. Okay, and we're back. Uh, it's supposed to be 1300 milliamps, um, what it states on the battery, but after going through that test for a couple of hours, it's only 700. So pretty significant power loss on this. And I'm really curious to see how much current is actually able to output. So I've got a couple of wires here. I'm just gonna tack these back on to the cell. This is literally just for curiosity sake. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything with this cell. I'm probably going to throw it in my bin of uh, lithium batteries. Um, that I'm accumulating and need to go to Lowe's with to recycle. Just a uh, tip for everyone out there, if you have lithium batteries like from your old phone or um, controllers on like the PS4 or something, oh man, this one is just so much thermal mass, I cannot heat this up, um, that you should recycle them properly. If you just check out online, you can find somewhere near you that is a good recycling center. And then I've got one of my load testers here. This one's nice because I can use external power input. That way I'm only testing the power of whatever, or the current of whatever I'm trying to test. 
Now I'm going to connect this up. I'm always confused which side is positive, which side is negative. It looks like left is positive. And I need a flathead for this. Uh, but yeah, this will probably get thrown in my bin of uh, lithium batteries that I need to go take the recycling center. Which I've got, I don't know, four or five now? Which is a fair bit, I guess. That is positive. And then I've already stripped this back a bit. Negative goes right in. And it's powering up. This is charged all the way. Yes, it should be. Yeah, so 4.11 volts. Just about. I'm going to zoom in too when I do this test. That way you all can see it. And maybe turn this light off. And maybe my room light too. That way there's no glare or anything. There we go. That is very dark. And then I'm going to pull my USB charger over here. It connects to this since it's system power. That way it's not drawing any current from the, the cell itself to power the tester. So is that any better? There we go. Zoom in a little more. All right, so uh, zero amps. And now let's see how high it actually goes. We're at 0.35 and down to 4.06 volts. And An amp at four volts. It's it's still pretty good. I mean, it's outputting a good amount of current. I'm gonna go ahead and just drop it off there because that is actually pretty good. Usually, uh, when it comes to an, uh, a cell like this, you only really want to uh, draw as much current as about what it's rated to. So it says at 1300 milliamp hours, you really only want to draw about 1.3 amps from it, and we were very easily able to do an amp and a half and it dropped down to about a little under four volts so that is it's still pretty good it's just the capacity is super 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 low and i think it is outputting it is affecting the current draw on the actual screwdriver so i'm just going to disconnect this and then i've got another cell already ready to go definitely don't short those out i've got one ready right here uh, this one I've pulled from some old battery something, I don't remember what it was. Uh, it tests out to about 2.2 amps. So significantly more current can be drawn from this. And it is a higher capacity, so it should last a lot longer. I'm going to just pull in my soldering thing so that we can hold it on there. And I've already kind of pre-tinned these in anticipation. And Oh, what's really nice about this too, I forgot to mention it earlier, the wires that they're using inside here are silicone so that's that is pretty nice that is some it's a good attention to detail that they didn't use just some crappy pvc wire i say that because uh, it could be getting hot in here from the amount of current that it's being drawn from the cell and so if they use the pvc it could start to get warm uh, warp and maybe even melt and short against something and let's see if i can curl that up like that. And squeeze it on in there. We're almost there. All right, and just tuck that black wire down. So yeah, silicone wires on, on all the connectors in here. I don't really think it's worth pulling this out and looking at the circuit board because uh, I kind of got a glance at it. There's a MOSFET on top of the, uh, the board here closest to the motor. It looks like a very, very tiny um, charging chip on the bottom. And then probably over here, just an H-bridge um, driver and everything, because this does support uh, reverse and forward. So it's just an H-bridge driver over there. It looks like two. So two H-bridge drivers, maybe. So it's not really worth pulling out. But uh, just from that little test there, you can see that it is working. So the cell is in there properly. I just want to make sure this board is lined up. A little charging board there. Looks good. Throw this back on top. USB ports lined up. Switch back over to the Phillips. And we'll put the screws back in place. 
And if you can hear a little jingling in the background, that's my cat playing with his toy. So five screws. I don't know if I've said this tip before, but uh, if anyone hasn't heard it yet, uh, a good thing that goes or a good tip for these self-tapping screws. Um, it's already had threads in there from when they originally put in. So what you want to do is just set it in the hole, reverse it until you hear a click like that, and then go forward. I moved that off camera because I was taking it close to my microphone, so you can definitely hear that click. Sometimes it's super, super predominant like that. You can hear it nice and loud. Sometimes a little bit softer. It really just depends on the type of threading and the screws and then how good the plastic is. So right in. So that's all of them, nice and quick. And it's working. It almost sounds about the same, but it does feel a little bit stronger. Um, hurt my hand, fingers a little bit. They kind of dug in there, but I think that will do it. Uh, like I said, nice and quick video, just swapping out the cell on that, just because we've got one that's significantly worse compared to what it was. So I'm gonna just throw this in my bin of cells to take and recycle to uh, to my Lowe's and we'll call it here. Um, I've got some more videos of coming out. I've got something, uh, I've been working on a, fixing a bunch of controllers over the past couple weeks. Most of them are not super interesting. It, a lot of them were just like cleaning up or replacing the uh, a potentiometer on the analog stick. But I've got a couple that uh, have no power. So I, I'm thinking uh, it might be the power management IC, or maybe just some corrosion on the board. But either way, they should be interesting. Look forward to that coming up soon. Uh, I'm going to cut it off here. Thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.